Hey Maker, if you aren't taking the time to edit your product photos, well, you should be. More than likely, you are taking your product photos with your smartphone or you're using an auto setting on a DSLR or mirrorless camera. You are letting the camera decide for you and sadly, the camera rarely gets it right. So in this video, I'm gonna take you inside of Affinity Photo 2 and show you five edits you should be making to increase the quality of your product photos. If you don't use Affinity Photo, no worries. These five edits can be made in most photo editing softwares available. If this is your first time joining me, my name is Christina Nicole. And I'm a product photography coach teaching makers like you how to take your own high quality product photos that actually attract more customers and make more sales for your product based business. Far too often I see makers just throw their hands up in the air out of frustration, snap a few quick photos and desperately try to fix them in editing. If you spend more than just a few minutes editing a product photo, then this might be you. Now, keep in mind, light is going to be the most important factor when it comes to taking quality product photos. And not only that, when you have a proper light setup, this is where editing becomes minimal. If you're tired of fighting with natural light, then my five day challenge light is just what you need. With light, you will learn how to evaluate, diagnose, and cure all of your crummy natural light symptoms. To learn more about my five-day challenge light, click the link here or grab it in the description below. Now that we're inside of Affinity Photo, I want to take a few minutes to talk a little bit more about why editing your product photos is super important. So I want you to think about editing as an opportunity to kind of put the finishing touches on your photo. This is an opportunity for you to increase the overall quality of your photo. So the first step that we're going to take when it comes to editing our product photos is we're going to adjust the exposure, the overall brightness of the photo. And there's a couple ways to do this inside of Affinity Photo and in other editing softwares like Snapseed. So the first option we're going to look at, we're going to go to the right-hand corner here at our adjustments, click that, and we're going to go to exposure. Now exposure is going to be more of an auto edit. You're going to have a slider. Same is going to be the case for Snapseed, where you can either increase the overall exposure or you can decrease it. Now you'll notice when we go to increase the exposure, it is increasing the overall brightness of the entire photo. This is gonna limit a little bit of our editing potential. So I'm actually gonna back out of this one. I'm going to right click and delete that layer from our layers panel. I'm gonna go back to adjustments and I'm actually gonna choose the curves tool. Now Snapseed has a curves tool option. That's part of the reason that I love it. Not only is Snapseed free, it allows for a little more advanced selective editing here. So when you're looking at a curves tool here, the top right is gonna be your light colors, your whites, your highlights. Middle is gonna be kind of your mid-tone colors and the bottom left corner is going to be your darks. So as I mentioned before, when we go to increase the exposure, increase those, those highlights, You'll notice that our dark color, so like our navy blue, is getting lighter, kind of getting a, a haze washed over it. So we're going to create a little point on the bottom left, and we're going to bring those darks back down so that they look a little more true to color. So this is going to give us a little more selective editing potential here. I can go real far, but the goal here is always to make our colors look as true to real life as possible. Which brings me to the second edit that you should be making. And that is with your white balance and making sure you're making color adjustments so that your product and your elements look true to real life. We go down to the adjustments. We're gonna select white balance. 
Now, white balance is going to give us a, an option to increase the color temperature to where it's a little warmer, a little cooler. And then we can also adjust tint, which is going to make it pink or green. Inside a Snapseed, you do have a white balance tool, and it's going to look very similar to this, where you can do exactly the same thing. I think the top component inside a Snapseed is called temperature and then tint. So with this specifically, I'm going to overall my photos, my what we're doing here is we want to make sure the whites look true to real life. That's probably the best, best portion of this to kind of compare it to is you want your whites to look pure white. So exposure is going to be the first thing to get us there because when an image is underexposed, our whites look kind of gray. And now we want to make sure that they don't look too yellow, too blue, too pink, or too green. So I'm actually going to use my keyboard arrows and I'm going to adjust this just slightly. I can use the slider, but it tends to move pretty quickly. And even at, you'll notice even at 5%, we're a little too warm. So this is, but I feel like zero is just slightly cool. So I feel like we need to be about a one or a two here. And it may just be that slight of an adjustment that we're making. There's our two, that's a three. And you can already see, I actually think a 2% is where I'm going to stay. If we go down to tint, now because I have some bluish green colors in here, more than likely we're getting kind of a green color cast. So I am going to adjust that slightly as well. I'm going to go at about a five there. Now, something that's really cool that you can do inside of Affinity Photo is if you first adjust your exposure and then you adjust your white balance and you still, still feel like your product colors are a little off, the cool thing about Affinity Photo that pretty much any free software out there like Snapseed is not going to offer is selective color editing. So if we go back to adjustments, we can click on that and we're going to go to HSL. And what you'll notice is if you just grab these sliders and shift them, it's going to make changes to the whole photo. What we have to do to create a change to a specific color is we have to selectively choose from the color panel up here. So I'm going to choose this light blue color. And sometimes you have to play with it. Like if I take the green and I go to make move the sliders, we're not noticing a lot of changes. I'm going to select this blue. You'll notice that I can completely alter the color of those elements. So that's the color that we're definitely going to be using. Look, I can go all the way to purple, pink. Like, look at that. That's crazy. So while this was a pretty accurate depiction, I want to go a little more green. And I'm talking about three degrees here. Something you can also do, if you'll notice, you got four dots up here. Well, this kind of gives us a range of tones. If I want to kind of get more into that teal color here, I can move this forward and this forward to make my color a little more precise. And this looks more true to color. If I select the yellow, you'll notice I can change the color of the pen and the colors on the cards. And then we're going to choose the dark blue because that is going to affect our navy. You'll notice I can go to like a brownish color with our navy. I can go up to a green. I'm going to stick with about a three there, but I'm also going to shift the overall saturation, which saturation is just going to make the color a little more vibrant. And what I'm really focusing on here is the card. And while the card and this, you know, stuffed confetti here or the stuffing are similar in color, we want to make sure the product is true to real life. And that looks great. Now, at any point in time, you can go over to your layers panel here and you can re-click in and make adjustments to other edits. So I'm actually going to try to increase the exposure a little bit more on this without blowing out the detail now that I've made all other adjustments and I think that looks great. The third edit you're going to make to your photos may or may not be relevant to you but it's super important. So if you're using any type of lines in your photos we want to make sure those lines are straight. So what you're going to do is go to the crop tool over here on the left panel and you're going to go to the top with the straighten tool. When you click the straighten tool and you move your mouse into the frame, you'll notice there's a little level. 
Now to use the straighten tool, what you're going to do is you're just going to click on the line you want straight and you're going to follow the level all the way across and then you're going to release and it's going to make that adjustment for you. The fourth edit you should be making may or may not apply to you. And this is using a heel tool or a clone tool inside a Snapseed. It's called the heel tool here in Affinity Photo and other pro softwares like Photoshop. It's going to be called the clone brush tool. What this does, it allows us to take a portion of the photo and essentially clone it to another portion of the photo so that we can get rid of things like dirt or lint or hairs or any kind of debris that could be distracting or make your photo look, you know, dirty or unprofessional. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to jump in here and zoom in. And we're just going to check and see if we have anything. Now, another good option to use with the cloning tool is you will notice, and you don't notice it when we're zoomed out, but who knows how close somebody's going to look at this photo. I highly recommend not showing brand names of other brands in your photos, especially if they're really well known because they can steal focus. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to get rid of the brand name on this pen. Easy way for me to show you how to use the clone brush tool. You're going to select that tool. Now you want to come over here and watch this. If I make a selection, which on I'm on a Mac, I'm hitting option then clicking my mouse. You'll notice it's not doing anything. First, first thing, always, when you use any of the tools on this left panel, you need to make sure your background is selected in the layers panel. So we're going to select the background. We're going to come back over here. And now you'll see that I can take the selection I chose and I can click it over this brand name. Now, what's really important here is you'll notice that we've got kind of a brighter yellow here. It gets darker and darker as we move in. Now, if I had pulled a selection from, say, here and went and moved it over here, you can see that change. So anytime you're using the clone tool, you want to make sure that you are selecting a portion of the photo that's going to have similar tones and colors. I don't know if that's detail of the background or maybe it's a speckle of dirt. We're going to hit option, select, and we're just going to cover that up. Checking out the actual product and card and making sure there's no dust or lint or anything on it. And we're pretty good. Now, keep in mind, this type of edit, you're going to have a better result inside of a pro software like Affinity Photo. So Snapseed does have a heel tool. But the difference between Snapseed and Affinity Photo is Affinity Photo allows you to select what you want to clone, where Snapseed does not do that. Snapseed is going to make that selection for you. So inside of Snapseed, you're going to zoom in and you're going to tap the screen on the speckle of dirt or the hair, or you're going to drag your finger over the hair. And then Snapseed is going to decide what it chooses to clone. And it does not always get it right. So that's going to be kind of the limitation with Snapseed versus Affinity. Inside of Affinity, you choose the selection, not the software. Now, the fifth and final edit that we want to make sure we are making to our photos is resizing. Now, resizing is a three-step process. If you want more information on resizing, you could click the link up here in the right-hand corner or grab it in the description below. The first step to resizing is cropping to the proper aspect ratio. The reason this is important is because depending on the platform you're using, we'll use Etsy as an example, they're going to display your product photo in a certain shape. And we want to make sure that we have the right shape. Sadly, right now, as I'm recording this video, Etsy is actually displaying your product photos in three different aspect ratios. What you're going to do is click the crop tool on the left panel. Up here at the top, you're going to see this little settings wheel, and we're going to choose 4-3. Four, 4-3 three. Four, three aspect ratio is my recommendation for Etsy while keeping your actual product in that square, square frame. All you're going to do is grab the corner, and you're going to drag it in. Now, you'll notice that the shape is staying the same size. Make sure our product's centered. 
I want to watch. I don't want to crop too much, but I want to watch getting that tag piece in there. Anytime we're using additional props and stuff, it helps create focus by just letting those peek into the image frame. Once you have your crop set the way you want, you're just going to hit enter. Cropping is step one of resizing. Now, at this point, you should have made all your edits. We are ready to save the actual photo. So we're going to go up to file and we're going to go to export. Now you have to use the export option to make any adjustments here. Now we did crop pretty big chunk of this photo out, which when we're shooting with a smartphone, as I did with this image, we have to be careful not to crop too much of the photo out because then we may not be able to meet Etsy's recommendations. So for me specifically, I recommend a 2667 by 2000 pixel dimensions for that 4-3 aspect ratio. Keep in mind, that is just a recommendation. You want to make sure your pixels are at least over 1500 and under 3000. So we're just going to leave our pixel dimensions as they are. If you wanted to change them, like let's say this was 3000 and we wanted to change it to 266, you would just add that number in there. And because you already have the aspect ratio locked in, it's going to automatically pick the other dimension for you. Now with the pixel dimension set here, you'll notice the file size is 1004.29 kilobytes, which Etsy recommends being under one megabyte, which would be under a thousand kilobytes. So we're going to go here. And if I jump up to best quality, it goes to four megabytes. That's a huge, huge file size. We want to be under one megabyte. So I'm actually going to check medium quality here and see how low it takes us. This actually is not bad. I recommend between 300 and 700 kilobytes, but as long as you're under one megabyte, you're good to go. And then you're going to export it. Now, I took you step by step through these five edits you should be making to increase your photo quality inside of Affinity Photo. I have an entire series on Snapseed. So if you prefer to use a free editing software on your mobile device so that your workflows all in one place, you can check out that complete series by clicking the link in the corner or by grabbing it in the description below. Please take the time to like this video if you found it useful and don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you want to learn more about taking your own high quality product photos. See you next time.